Boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back. Glad you made us another social production. We're doing it on Wednesday, March the 6th, 2024. Ladies and gents, if it's your first time, buckle up, buckle down. Where can you find these videos? Every Wednesday and Friday. Dropped on Instagram, follow me there, subscribe on the YouTube channel for the full length videos. Check out patreon.com slash Rob Sadri if you'd like to physically, financially support the show. If you've been with me from the get go, sending all the love right back to you. Wherever you're tuning in from, whether it's here in Canada, here in Ontario, over there in Vancouver, over there on the West Coast, down south in the United States, Mexico, South America, over there in Europe, Africa, Asia, Middle East, New Zealand, Australia, Indonesia, Thailand, uh, Bangkok, what's going on? Wagwan in Australia once again, Papua New Guinea, hello. North Pole, South Pole, East, West, North, East, West, South, all of it. Globally, we're on a sphere. We're on a little teeny tiny marble. We're on the tiniest of marbles floating in space each and every day. Just in that Goldilocks zone, baby. I hope you're all doing well. I'm excited because it's Wednesday. I'm feeling good. As good as it gets. So I hope you're all feeling good too. Wherever you're tuning in from, shout out to the gang. Shout out to the syndicate. Again, if you've been with me from the get-go, Thank you. Thank you for being a part of my life. Thank you for letting me be a part of yours. Uh, go ahead and hit that subscribe button one more time on the Instagram, on the, on, the, uh, on the YouTubes. Help your boy, help yourself, get the reminders, tell your friends and family. Let's have some fun around here. Talk about everything and nothing. The most uh, all over the place show, podcast. What even is it? What even is this? What do you, and I'd like to re revert the question and say what, what it is and what it isn't even it is. What, what isn't it even? Even... Even if it was what it is, what it isn't is that what it is, is that it's not what it is. What it seems like it is, is it's all over the place is what that is. Sip, sip to the gang. Inanimate objects having voices, ladies and gentlemen. An inanimate object, breaking news. Inanimate objects having voices. It's never been done before. Okay, maybe it has. Maybe it hasn't. I don't know. But imagine if they actually had voices. Take your, take your coffee mug, for example. If your coffee mug could have an, it's cause it's an inanimate object, what if it had a voice? What if it talked to you? Wouldn't it be nice to have inanimate objects? Let's calm it down. Let's relax a little bit into it. Wait, wouldn't it be nice to have a little bit of voices for your inanimate objects like your coffee mug? Imagine every time you were to pour a little bit of hot coffee in that coffee, it would talk back to you. Ooh, 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 you're gonna pour that coffee in me, big boy, yeah. Ooh, I like it hot, I like it hot. Ooh, pour it to the top, pour it, ooh, ooh. Over the rim, right over the rim, play that rim, big boy. I like that hot coffee, you keep the hot beverages in me, I like it. Imagine it talk to you that way, or in any other way. Ooh, ooh, put in a couple of ice cubes, because it's summertime, it's springtime, you're gonna, big boy's gotta put some, Put some ice cubes in the drink it poo. Ooh, brrr, I'm getting the chills because it's chilly. That's going to be refreshing for you. I wish it did that. It could. Inanimate objects having voices. Why not? Oh, you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna overfill me right now. Oh, 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 a spill. You know what I mean? It would be nice to just have a little bit of like, because why not? Because why not? We're all made of matter. We're all made of cells. We're all made of particles and atoms and whatnot. Be nice if they talk back. If you were to put on your shoes, be like, ooh, ooh, tight fit. I like some tight fit shoes. Ooh, here comes the toes. Been looking forward to you. I haven't seen you for about eight to 10 hours. Did you catch some beautiful Z's? Oh, oh, slip it right in there. That's a snug fit right out there. Ooh, fits like a glove, fits like a, fits like a shoe. I wish they talked, I, I'm just saying. So if you're inanimate objects, like your coffee mug, like your shoes, like your loofah, the one that goes up and down your, the one that goes in your anus, the one that goes up your butt, the one that goes in your coochie cooch. We're talking about the douche, uh, a la douche, a shower with a douche. Oh yeah, stuff it in there, clean it all out. Oh, let me do the dirty walk. It might say that, it might say other things. How are you today? Beautiful, gorgeous, sexy bastards out there, you sexy bitches and hoes out there, you pimps and pimping and, and, and players and the 
good, the good looking and beautiful people of the world. How you all doing out there? Hope you're all doing well, pimp. Hope you hope you're doing just, oh man. But that's what it is, baby. Inanimate objects having voices. Pour a little bit of that hot coffee, man. I like it hot. Yeah. Mm. I've decided to take it a step farther because we've heard of you get a, you know, every time you sign up to an agreement or whatever, you're signing up for a service, they'll ask, would you like, would you like paper bills or would you like electronic bills? But they never ask you for physical bills, fam. That's where I stepped in. I see a gap. I see a gaping hole of a gap in the system. And I says to myself, what do the people want? Physical bills. From now on, 2024, moving forward, if you are to sign up for any agreement regarding anything, electrical bill, cell phone bill, uh, internet bill, your car insurance bill, your mortgage, I want, here's what we're gonna do. No more paper, no more electronic. I'm talking creating jobs out there, actual physical bills. What if I told you you'd have a person, a beautiful person named Bill, under a company called Bill, that'll show, That'll show up to your doorstep. That'll show up and knock, knock, knock. Who's there? Oh, it's the end of the month. The rent is due. I'm your, I'm your bill I'm here to collect. A beautiful male, a beautiful female. It doesn't matter. They're all named Bill, and they show up. Ring, ring. Who is it? It's your cell phone bill. How would you like to pay? Would you like to pay with a debit? Would you like to? Would you like to write a check? Do you have coinage? Have you been saving up with the? Ooh, I get a little bit of change back. Put in your pocket. Save it up at the. Put it, in the, put it in the little piggy bank on top of your little fridge. At the end of the month, you want to pay them bills. What about I to, What if I told you a physical bill came up, sat down with you, asked you how you're doing, how's it going? I know it's all about business and all about the monies, but I do want to send a little bit of like, you know, just, just a little bit of that personal vibe to it because you don't want to lose humanity. You don't want to just be like paper or electronic. What about the physical bills? I love that for people to get, you know, oh, it's my cell phone bill showing up. Got an appointment with my cell phone bill. A jack dude just comes up at like 11.30 in the morning, sits down with you, has a cup of coffee or tea, whatever your choice of beverage is. Are we drinking right now? It's 11 o'clock somewhere. I don't even know what time they say it's somewhere, but they say it's sometime somewhere. It's four o'clock somewhere. Depends when you start drinking. It's two in the, it's two in the a.m. somewhere. It's two in the afternoon somewhere. It's 9 a.m. somewhere. They'll say that it's 10 a.m. somewhere. It's always, that's, that's what it is because time is relevant and it's always around us but that's neither here or that i just want physical bills ladies and gentlemen i just want a little bit of physical bills for somebody coming over there putting a hand over your shoulder while sneaking the other hand in your pocket just just playing with your taint while taking out a check out your pocket taint tickling taking out a check taint tickling taking out a check taint tickling taking out a check why because you don't want to again lose that physical human interaction because you don't want it to just be like oh i got paper i got electronic but they're at the end of the day aren't they both connected to the same system it's like the it's like two arms attached to the same body serving the same system or something that's what i'd like man car payment a bill shows up it's time for your car payment want to go for a spin maybe pick up some dough from the old bank Karoo? i'll drive hop in get in there with a physical bill that's what i'm talking about ladies and gentlemen. that's wednesday Like many of you boys and girls out there, I'm excited to hear their talks. I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's new, new, but it's been going on for some time. There have been talks of putting vaccines in fruits and vegetables, veg tables, vag tables, tables made out of vag. That's right, vegetables. They're talking about putting vaccines. It's just, I don't know if it's already been implemented. I don't know if it's just talks or rumors or just tossing out ideas. What's going on? Here's what I think. I don't, you know, I'm not for it or against it, but if we're going to be putting stuff in the fruits, if you're going to, let's say, put polio vaccines in the tomatoes, because you're like certain demographic and certain regions could use a little bit of extra boost in their polio vaccinations. If that, whatevs, dude. You know what I'm saying? I'm not here to tell you what to do, what not to do, but if we're putting the good, good in the vaccines and the whatevs, I'm for science. I, I like to people, I like people to have choice, but if we're going to put stuff in the vaccines, or what if we're going to put stuff in the fruits? This, this is what I say. Let's start with steroids. Let's start light with steroids. You know what I mean? Inject the fruits and vegetables, 
you know, there's already talks of like, there's, oh, there is, you know, there's antibiotics in the milk and the dairies. There is already stuff in it already. Look, but like, let's, if we're going to be putting vaccines, forget the vaccines for example. What, what if we built stronger people? What if we jacked everybody up? What if your tomato, what if your cucumbers had a little bit of deca? What if your cucumber gave you, what if your cucumber gave you traps, but it also gave you deca dick? What if you had a little bit of dianabol? You know what I'm talking about? Give me the dianabol fucking... Let's go. I want to be swole, but like minus the gyno, dude. Keep the bitch tits to yourself, but also give me the traps because this is trap music, baby. And we're trapped, trapping all day, animal trapping, trapping ourselves, putting your traps in traps. What's going on? Getting jacked via fruits. That's what's going on. I want to see, you know, that, that, that's what it is. Give me a little bit of, do I don't know. I don't want to be like, you know, Give me, I'll still like work out on my regular basis, but it's nice to know that we could do this. What if we jacked everybody? What if everybody could get the good, good? Like, let's say, give me whatever The Rock is having. Give me whatever Drew McIntyre is having. You know what I'm talking about? Just fuck it. Oh, just jacked children, turn into jacked adolescents, turn into even further jacked adults. Just everybody's just having the most difficult time getting to places. Oh, I can't wipe my own butt. It's all right. I'll wipe it for you, you jacked fella, lady. You, oh, man, that's nice. Because that brings in teamwork. So that's, that's what it is. I want to see a little bit of steroids in foods, if we could, please. You know what I mean? Put a little bit of extra growth hormone. Let's kick it up a notch. Let's everybody elevate. Let's everybody have a difficult time finding the right size uh, t-shirts. Oh, you know, normally I'd wear a medium or a large, but my biceps are huge, so I'm gonna have to opt for triple X, sorry. It looks a little bit loose here in the mid, but the biceps have gotta stay tight. What are you on? I'm on steroids, but not really. I'm on fruits and vegetables. That's what we could say. That's what we could be doing. But no, instead of that, we gotta be talking, oh, measles, oh, polio, oh, hepatitis, whatever, dude. Let's, uh, what else, dude? Let's get a little bit, let's, let's mix it up. Let's get the trail mix of steroids. A nice little concoction, nothing too severe, nothing too harsh. Just enough to give you a little bit of back acne and a little bit of fucking chiseled abs, dude. Oh, let's go. That's what I'm talking about, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. It's, uh, it's the, it's the season. It's the season. It's spring is here, ladies and gents. Spring is here. I'm excited. A lot of great things happening in and around the world. I'll say this. Uh, a beautiful, a beautiful Indian billionaire in India, if I'm not mistaken. He is Indian. I'm not sure if he's in India. I believe he's in Southeast Asia. He's one of the richest men men out there on planet Earth. He's a rich Indian beautiful man, Indian billionaire, and he just recently he's in the process. He either did or he's doing it. It's a whole. It's a shebang. It's a whole process. Throwing his son a lavish, billionaire style uh, wedding. Uh, congratulations, Mazel. Uh, you know what I'm talking about. But that's what it is. And it, he's going. He's going all out because he's a billionaire and he wants to you know spoil the kids. He's which is nice. If you've got it, spend it. Hell's yeah. Le throws a the lavish party, invites all, you know, people of all sorts, uh, fancy schmancy people, you know, the upper echelons of society and whatnot, just people mingling, having a good time. Uh, th there were guests, like I believe there were guests, but there were guests who were also performers. Rihanna was one of the performers slash guests. I believe Riri actually cleaned up, dude. I believe congratulations to Riri. I, I, if I'm not mistaken, she got paid eight milli to perform for uh, the beautiful couple. Shout out to the couple, congratulations. I just wanna put it out there that I too am available. I did get the invite, it was a little bit too late. Uh, my schedule is, you know, it's a tight schedule. I gotta one, make time for me to sit down and you know, I got a jerk. First I got a jerk. I do have to, there's, you know, I do take a shit per day minimum. So the schedule's tight. Other than that, you know, I'm trying to make my way up into the old comedic scene, if you will, by my own way, not even knowing what I'm doing out here, taking two steps backwards, one step in the, f or something, just stepping, trying to crib walk out here, or so I don't even know how to crib walk, just trying to take steps, crawling. But all I'm saying is that my services are also available out there. If you are a billionaire, if you'd like a little bit of a show for you and your loved ones, if you'd like, a if you'd like to pay 
I'll round it up. I don't like how, you know, I, I dig it. I support Riri. I support everybody out there doing whatever. But I find it that eight is a lot. For me, I'd, I'll like to make it simple. Round it up 10 million so that you don't even have to think about it. Because it's like, yeah, eight, it's, it's so... I find it silly when you're dealing with like, oh, I spent eight million there, seven million there. I wonder how many more millions. Whereas, whereas if you just paid your boy ten million bucks, I'd come out there and it's like you you don't have to do that much math. You don't have to do that much math. So uh, I like to say to the couple, to the beautiful young couple, to the beautiful fancy schmancy couple out there, congratulations. Uh, uh, you know, let's you know couple of, you know, just the, just the thing off the top of my, you know, just, you know, just thinking because it's an Indian wedding. It's a beautiful India. It's billionaires. It's Indian billionaires. Uh, jokes for the couple. Uh, I bet you this, I bet you this young couple is no longer going to need the Kama Sutra after tonight. I'll tell you that right here. Am I right, ladies and gentlemen? Uh, ding, ding, pencils down. Let's see what you learned uh, there, son. Hope you have studied. But uh, that's just a little bit of, you know, that's just a little bit. You got to, you got to. That's what I does. Uh, you know, congratulations to everybody. If I were, if I were, you know, if I had billionaire wedding aspirations, you know, other, other things that you could do, I say, you know, helicopters, always bring helicopters, drop your helicopters, uh, drop your guests on and off with helicopters, have lots of pads for the landing, or you can just drop them mid air via parachute, you know, just, Come give everybody money guns so when they're jumping out with the pairs they could just like money guns just fucking land on your lawn and then let's go dude seven days and seven nights of celebration because it's a wedding let's do it i would you know i would probably hire animals i would probably hire animals but not just regular animals like new animals chipped animals fucking monkeys that could type you know Dolphin that could serve, dude. You see a penguin out there just handing out shrimps. Would you like a little bit of cocktail? Would you like a little shrimp cocktail from a penguin's lips? Uh, right there, dude, and your lips. Shrimp from a penguin's mouth to yours. Why? Because I'm a billionaire, that's why. I would probably buy everybody cars, not just regular cars. If I were a billionaire, I'd buy everybody. I'd probably buy the thousand guests that would attend. Uh, you know, the fanciest of Rolls Royces topped off with just sprinkle a little bit of Ferrari on top of that Rolls Royce. Why? Because we'd like to. It's That's why. And then we'd invite, again, uh, we'd invite entertainment, guests who are dancers, performers, Cirque du Soleil, a little bit of wrestling, a little bit of boxing, a little bit of just, ooh, anim oh, animal enthusiasts, contortionists, dude, magicians, uh, disappearing the bride, reappearing the bride. Where is she? Oh my, she'll be back for a dress change right there. She's in and out of a dress. Oh my God, seven dress changes one night. How does she do it with the help of, I don't know, get a magician. Great people out there doing great things. You know, want to cut the friggin' get a, get a, get a, get a person who specializes in like cutting the bride and groom in half and then like switching torsos. That's what I would do in front of everybody. Be like, ah, oh, he switched the bodies. That's right, he did. Will he switch him back? I don't know. They said till death do us part. Deal with that for a couple of years, you know what? Because honeymoon stages could be very easy and it could be smooth sailing. But what if you just happen to, you know, open up your eyes after a little torso swap a -roo, and the next thing you know, you're the one with the tits and your wife has got balls. So, I don't know. I'm just saying, have a ball. My services are also available. A little bit of this, a little bit of that, a little bit of this, a little bit of you. Oh shit, the tits in the bride and groom's face. Eh, 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 eh. Right there, dude. This titty is available for $10 million. But again, my schedule's pretty tight. So, you know. Do your thing, player. Do your thing. Ladies and gents, boys and girls. I would probably have like a destination wedding, but like multiple destinations. I'd make it a thing so that by the end of the wedding, people would be tired because we hop so many destinations. I take you around the world each, you know, Bali one second, fucking, you know, we'll drop into the, where are we going next? Oh, it's Eastern Europe. Where are we going after that? Southeast Asia. Where are we going after that? Africa. We're dropping all over the place. It's a billionaire wedding. Let's go. Probably get everybody gold bars.
just for the fuck of it, I'd probably give everybody gold bars. You'd probably say, well, what, what kind of food would you like? Vegetarian? Meat, all meat lovers? Or a bar of gold? Oh, guess what? You're having a bar of gold in your mouth. Chua bowl gold. Sprinkle a little bit of gold on your food, dude. You'd shit out gold, because that's the way it goes down here. Billionaire wedding paradise. Let's go. Shout out to the gang. Thank you for joining me once again. Ladies are fighting. Ladies are fighting. Ming. Little bit of a cat fight. A little bit of a... You know what I'm talking about? Not in person. I didn't see it in person. I saw it on the lines. I'm not sure if you guys or gals have seen it as well. But there are ladies are fighting. And uh, one was captured on the lines. It was beautiful. Uh, I don't know where. It was in a bar. Uh, I'll give you a little bit of a depiction. Two uh, beautiful ladies fighting or but not fighting physically but verbally going at it in a bar somewhere i'm not sure where it was but it was going now two beautiful ladies uh, one had a baby one didn't have a baby the one without the baby heard the baby cry or you know just do baby in a bar and she was starting to flip out on the on the mother who brought her child into the bar so that i guess the question the big question of the day ladies and gentlemen Ladies and gentlemen, uh, madames and messieurs, babies and bars, do they belong and who's in the right? Which lady is in the right? First of all, whenever, the, let, let's break it down in order for us, let's unpack the situation in order for us to be able to simply, uh, objectively look at it for what it is from afar and because we got to determine, the public has to determine who's in the right, who's in the wrong and uh, the most, the most difficult task, yet the most simplest of first steps of determining who is in the right when it comes to cat fights, when it comes to two themes, uh, you know, fighting it out, just about to at least about to, you know, about to get them claws out, about to pounce on each other. Who's in the right? Again, the most difficult, yet one of the easiest and simplest first initial steps is try to break it down. Who is the hotter of the two? that should kind of be an indication as to where the fight shall, shall lead or uh, where it should go. It doesn't even matter which direction the fight, whether verbal or physical goes. If you can, again, it's probably the, it's probably the most difficult of tasks because you don't want to be unfair, but it's also one of the easiest steps as to kind of setting the tone as to who you're going to side with. So if you see two, you know, two females, uh, two felines about to go at it, and if you're like, oh, I wonder who's in the right, the first step, one of the, again, most difficult yet simplest steps is determining which of the two individuals is the hotter of two. Uh, we can base this on, you know, hair, uh, makeup, lack thereof, titties, lack thereof, or is there an abundance of titties on one side and then, you know, uh, slightly flat chested on the other, but still nonetheless, two beauty perkies up there saying, hello, we're here. It's spring, summertime and no bras. And guess what? Smaller tits take longer to sag or don't sag, or they get like, they do sag to every tit sags, every body part sags at the end of the day when you're nine to five, everything's a little bit droopy, a little bit sideways, doesn't matter. The point is work your way up, down, further just you know oh who's got you know is anybody working with a tram stamp here uh you know has anybody got like a 90s barbed wire tattoo is anybody wearing you know a skirt how short is the skirt do they have a booty you know what i'm talking about do they have a big booty do they have a smaller booty do they have a nice waist to booty ratio what about the calves what about the thighs could you see cellulite is that extra points for them keeping their reels? Would you like a little bit of cellulite or would you like to see no cellulite whatsoever? I myself find a little bit of cellulite very natural, very beautiful. So if I'm looking, I got to see cellulite. And I'm like, that's a decent amount of cellulite. Ah, ladies are for real. She checks out. But you don't want to see a lady with just cellulite. If, she, if it's just that, let's be honest, let's be, if it's just all cellulite, you can't just be like, yum, yum. But then to each their own. This is just me, of course. And then, you know, you work your way down to the calves. Do they have nice, you know, do they have nice calves? Do they have nice feet? How's the ankle situation? You know, what about the toenails? What's going on down there? 
And then, you know, so all these things are to be considered. Again, it's not easy being a judge. Uh, my heart is always, you know, I'm, I see two females, I see anybody out there who's about to either verbally or physically go at it. And my heart is always like, man, my I just like, man, it's like we're people. And all of a sudden I'm just, my heart goes out to everybody essentially. So it's hard. It's very hard to determine who's in the right, uh, you know, uh, but then there's alternative, you know, pieces to the equation that come in. Like in this particular case, we had the additional baby, you know, with a lady and then no baby with the other lady. So who's in their right? Essentially, it comes down to do babies belong in bars? You know, uh, you know, if the baby's drinking, then yes. If the baby is drinking, I would say the baby should be allowed in a bar. That's, I feel that's only, you know, because you don't want to be surrounded with people who are drinking, specifically when you're in a place when everybody's most of the time drinking, or at least is, you know, I'm not saying everybody in a bar should, but I'm saying if you're going to bring a baby, I'm saying the baby should be consuming some sort of alcoholic beverage. That's just what I think. Uh, and babies, I would assume it actually, you know, uh, and babies make great drunks. Because, you know, it's very raw, it's very real. They're going through very basic emotions. It's either crying or smiling and laughing or shitting themselves, which is, again, relatable to any adult also drinking in a bar or a pub. Uh, which one of us hasn't uh, had a couple of drinks and found themselves either crying, laughing, smiling, or shitting themselves? It's very relatable. So if I see a baby in a bar, yes, I want to see the baby drinking. Uh, additional points that would make it easier for me to side with the mama with the baby. I would say, you know, does this baby plan on picking up the check at the end of the day? Is this a, is this a team player baby? Or is this one of them babies that shows up and at the end of the night, he's uh, whipping out a calculator, doing, doing pie charts in his little teeny tiny head, trying to divide and multiply and be like, my share, be like my share was, you know, is he one of them babies or is one of them babies that's like, you know what guys? Last time it was on you. As a matter of fact, it's been on you for some time now. It's been seven, eight months. It's mostly been on you. Let baby take care of it. You know, a nice poop with a nice burp. I'll pick up the check right after. If it's that kind of, if it's that kind of vibe, baby, then I say, let's go. You know what I'm talking about? If it's a baby that'll, I don't want a baby that starts a fight. You know what I mean? I don't want a baby that drinks too much and starts a fight. But I do want a baby who drinks enough and should a fight break out, I want a baby that is willing to step up. I'm willing to, I, I will make an exception for the baby who's willing to step up in the bar. If they're saying, because babies come up with all sorts of excuses for not rolling up his sleeve, for not pulling up the old bootstraps. Oh, my head, my head is still farming. I'm so squishy. Typical baby. But, you know, there might be some babies out there who are exception to the rule, where it's like, oh, I'm a baby with a, with a head as hard as a bowling ball. You can knock the, you can grab me by the feet and then, you know, knock people in the mouth with my head at the back specifically. It's very hard. Use me as a, use me as a tool. Use me as a weapon. Launch me across the bar. Let me, you know what I mean? If you got a nice arm on you, launch the baby into, into because there's many people at the bar fight breaks out, could you utilize the baby? Could you put the baby in front of you so that they're not hitting your vital organs? Meanwhile, you're fucking coming in with the uppercuts, with the jabs, with the hooks, with the triangles and hecticons. You know what I'm saying? Putting people in trapezoids. If it's a, if it's a helper baby, bring the baby in a bar. You know. Uh, does the baby play darts? If the baby's really good at darts, while having a couple of drinks, let's go. Does the, pay, does the baby play pool? You know, a little bit of pool. Does the baby know how to break? Or is it that, is there, is it the kind of baby that wants to just be like, oh, put me on my high seat, put me on my high chair, looking, looking at people from above, as if the baby's better than the other people in the bar. Oh, hi, oh, I'm gonna stay dry here. Well, no room for dry babies. No, if you're drinking, baby, let's go. But again, so in that sense, you got to, again, it's uh, it's nuanced, it's various. You got to look at the circumstance. If the baby is not drinking, 
I could, if the baby is the designated driver, then I could potentially see as to why you'd say, you know what, it's okay, let the baby not drink. Let the baby not drink. So if the baby is the designated driver, let them do that, have fun with it, let them take you back home. That, that, that's cool too. Is, you know, is the baby a cute baby or is it one of those uggo babies that everybody like, oh, check out my baby. If it's an ugg, if it's an eyesore and you bring it to the bar where everybody's just trying to have a good time, then take your baby and take a hike right here, right run out of here. So who's in the right, ladies and gentlemen, please write a comment if you've seen the video, if, you've, uh, if you think babies belong in bars or don't belong in bars. Uh, let me know what you think. Together, I believe we can find a solution to this. Ladies and gents, boys and girls. Mm -hmm. What else is going on in and around the world? Ladies and gents, bear with me a few seconds because there's a lot of items that I'd like to discuss with you today. We talked about the baby, excellent. Talked about a lot of stuff, but we got more items. Definitely got more items. Sometimes it's good to take your time. It's good to take your time sometimes. No country for old pimps. I'll say this, ladies and gentlemen. No country for old pimps. That's right. Pimps are using social media platforms like Instagram to, uh, to be out there pimping. Normally, if it's, you know, and here's the, here's the thing. They're not just pimping of age people. They're pimping underage folk, children, minors on platforms like Instagram. And that's, you know, uh, I don't, you know, I, I like the idea, you know, I like the idea of, you know, not the, you know, I'm not saying go out there and be like, you know, not your actual, like, I'm not in line with, like, actual pimping, but I actually do love the, I do like the essence of pimping. I believe all of us, in some sense, are wheeling and dealing in some sense, to some degree. One of my favorite teachers, actually, uh, in elementary school, told us the value of pimping and what it means. Essentially, is to sell. If you can sell, and essentially sales is in a lot of things, that's what I took away from it as a young man. I remember I'm like, oh, that's a great way of looking at pimping. I'm not talking about pimping, you know, peepsies. In some sense, we are. But here's the, here's, the, here's the point. Instagram and other social media platforms are tools that are being used by pimps out there to get underage children to be there, you know, to be uh, run tricks, essentially, around places. We're, you know, not me personally, but like, you know, Meta and as well, like, you know, Instagram and other, you know, I would assume government bodies of sorts are involved in this. They're cracking down. Around 350,000 related posts to potential pimping activity was taken down. They found a, just, a, just last year in, this, in the span of a month, I believe. I want to say, you know, a couple of months, October, November, December, a few months. They found 18 images, 18 million images of, you know, underage explicit content which meta and instagram took them but here that's that's the thing the the message i guess the overall takeaway from this is that if you are going to be you know pimping is no longer an individualistic sport or a not in the old traditional sense at least to what it was uh, again, I like the romantic idea of being able to, you know, provide a service or a good. I do have, and I believe all of us are pimping out there. I, I really do believe that. But we're talking about like, you know, providing sexual services to, again, which I got to say, again, if it's adults, consenting adults, I'm all for it. 
But, you know, in the age of technology and the age of social media platforms and the age of, uh, you know, large conglomerates, can't be doing it old school, especially on the lines. The online's pimping game belongs to the likes of OnlyFans. That's the, if you're gonna, if you're gonna be pimping out there, you can, if you have the willpower, if you have the means, if you could somehow compete with the likes of OnlyFans or other platforms that provide explicit content, if you know what I mean, of the sexual kind, then that's how you can, you know, so that's what it is. So Pimpin is like digital nowadays. Mostly, the, a lot of it is digital. So you can't just be out there on the corner of the streets, be like, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be your protection. Most, most, most of the time these days, there's no more need for that middleman. There's no more need for that protection in some sense because it's, it's, you know, a lot of things are safer. Not to say that sex industry. I don't know much about the sex industry. I'm sure that it's, I'm sure there's got it's got dark sides to it. I, I'm not, you know, I'm not fully aware, but I'm, you know, I'm, you know, I understand there's certain things that go along with it, but there are people who also do it as a, as by choice. There's a lot of people that do it, you know, instead of working a minimum wage job or any other job, they would uh, prefer to, you know, sell Gucci on the lines and make bank. It doesn't work out for everybody, but there is some people that it works out for. Let's just say that that's my basic understanding of it, but you can't be. So if you want to be pimping out there, somehow transform yourself into a you know, into a computer or into some sort of a digital, uh, you know, like a platform where you have a, you know, where you have a chokehold on the market. If you can like, you know, if you can, cause you can't be out there and you're, you know, so it's time to retire certain things. Unfortunately, certain things can only now be viewed and appreciated in movies and music videos and in the comedy world. I can't really think of any other space where pimps would be, you know, appreciated for what they are. But I know that's what it is, man. It's hard out here for a pimp. So I'll say this. Uh, it's time to retire certain traditions. Uh, you know, if you've got a pimp hat, hang it up. If you got a cane, tuck it away. If you got a cape, fold it, put it in a dresser. If you've got, you know, if you've got a nice suit, you can still wear the suit. But, you know, modern times, modern, you know, modern people do modern things. So that's the, the takeaway from all this is to... Uh, watch out for your children uh, and you know also pour a little some some now for the pimps because again it's uh, it's no country for old pimps out there it's a dying breed of people uh, and that's that's what it is they are they are on their way to becoming the next uh, telephone booth which by the way I like to say uh, if you like to if you, uh, if you like to support the show you know that your support not only is for your boy and yourselves and everybody else out there but it's also for the telephone booths, which nobody likes to talk about uh, ever since we've gotten so many better ways of communicating via these beautiful wireless phones that are in our pockets that are basically little tiny computers that could do magic. Telephone booths have become nearly extinct and it's it's a sad circumstance. Nobody likes to talk about it. It's a disenfranchised community. They're, it's, you know, they're marginalized. I saw, you know, downtown last week, I saw a couple of telephone booths fucking, you know, on the corner of the street, just, you know, I'll blow you and let you make a free, you know, free collect call. Just get in here, put a quarter in me just so it gets the motion of, you know, make a call. Get in here, bit, open up its doors on its knees. Just willing to go down on a fellow or a lady. It doesn't matter. They're out there providing services. Times are rough. People are doing what they can and, uh, objects to need your love and affection so if you're out there wanting to support a telephone booth know that from every like from every subscribe from every comment a portion of those comments will be somehow given towards the, the dying telephone booth community and together with your help and the with the help of 3d printing and with the help of you know DNA and with the, with the help of, we're bringing it back. We're bringing back the telephone booths. We'll find a way. There's enough room for everybody and everything, I think. Sometimes it gets tight. Fucking, you know, maybe, but maybe it's time for them to go. I don't know what I'm talking about, ladies and gents, but that's nothing unusual around here, is it? It is, isn't it? It isn't, is it? Is it? It isn't. It's what it is. It is. Zip, zip. To the gag. Mmm. Boys and girls, ladies and gents. 
What else does your boy want to talk about? What do you want to talk about? I'll say, I'll say this. I'll say that, uh, I'll back up for a second. That's what I will say. I will back up and take my time. I will not be rushed. I will not be put in a corner. I'll put myself in a corner, but I will not be rushed. I'll take my time. I'll say this, ladies and gents. It's because I wrote like 10 different things that I wanted to talk about. Sometimes it gets difficult remembering all 10 different things. And that's why we do have other days, but other days we keep on adding more items. And sometimes we don't, sometimes we don't do things the way we'd like to do them and it just goes the way it goes. So bear with me a few seconds. While the hamster upstairs is turning around, doing cartwheels. We talked about, let's go over some of the stuff that we talked about. We talked about nine things I wrote, nine things that I wanted to discuss with you. And we covered a good chunk. We talked about inanimate objects, having voices, physical bills, steroids in your fruits, billionaire weddings, two hot mamas fighting out there. You know what I'm talking about? That was nice. We just talked about, you know, there's other items. There's definitely other, it's just, we'll wait here as long as it takes for me to remember. We will wait and wait and wait. I could easily walk over and grab my notebook. but it's best to put yourself in this position. It's best to feel this. No country for old pimps, we talked about that. Why don't I get my notebook? There's no way, no, there's no easy way out. I got the notebook. Ah! Ha ha! You ain't shit. You ain't shit. Your call ain't shit. Nothing about you is of value or importance. Hang up right now. Your call is definitely not important to us. You ain't shit. Your call ain't shit. And you're not important to us. If you had any cojones left, if you had any labias left, you'd hang up right now knowing there's nobody going to be calling you back and you'd go out there and you'd probably you'd probably cancel the subscription you'd cancel the services right now and go sign up somewhere else but you ain't shit and you're not going to do that because you know why because otherwise you'd have to pay up pay up the remainder of your contract up front in full but you ain't shit and we're not going to call you back your call's not important to us as a matter of fact on the list of things that are important to us you're you're the furthest thing on our list of things that are important to us. That's how far down the list you are. Items that are important to us. Uh, company potluck. Who's bringing what? Uh, Secret Santa for the company. That's of importance to us. Team building activities. Extremely important to us. You know? These are the items that are actually important to us. How much did we make last quarter? That's of importance to us. But you're not going to cancel. And you're calling shit and you ain't shit. What that was, ladies and gentlemen, was just, uh, that's just a little bit of an alternative to the traditional answering message that you'll get once you call somebody or some place you call somebody or something. It's happened to me in the past couple of weeks. I'm not going to say the place or whatever, but every time I call, 
goes on answering and says, your call is very important to us. Please hold on the line while the next available customer service agent gets back to you. You're, you're very important. They keep saying that I'm very important to them, but they're not showing any sort of appreciation or picking up a phone or calling me back, man. So I'm just thinking, just keep it real. Just be like, you ain't shit. Your, your phone call's not shit and you're stuck here, buddy. Here, buddy. Click. At least I know what I'm dealing with at that time. That's what I'm talking about, ladies and gents. Boys and girls. You can bet on it. You can bet your beautiful dollars on it now. The Oscars, I've recently found out that you could bet on it. And that's beautiful because, you know, the Oscars are not, you know, they're... From what I hear, they're not doing the show itself, the Oscars. You know, a lot of great movies out there. I love, you know, I love movies. Just watched Space Man, by the way, with Adam Sandler, with the Sandman. Enjoyed it. Had a couple of... Oh, man. Shed a couple of tears. Just, I don't know why. Because the motions be running through your boy, seeing a man in a space, and you know, a little bit distant from this, that, and the other. Pull on a couple of heartstrings. All of a sudden, I'm shedding the manliest of tears, but also telling myself, it's okay to cry. <laughs> Blowing out my nose 11.30 at night, hoping to, you know, hoping uh, that, you know, it's just, it's what it is, it's what it is. It's just, right there, it just... So, you know, I'm, I'm, I love movies. You all know that if you've been with me from the get-go, if you're just joining me today, you're like, oh, so you like movies, love movies, love a lot of things. Love creative people doing creative things. Uh, watch the movie. But the Oscars are, you know, that's the thing. I recently learned that you can actually bet on the Oscars. And that's beautiful because it gives you something a little bit. If you're like, oh, man, I wonder what's going to... Did they, they did spoil us a little bit a few years back. You know, with the whole, not gonna get into it, I'm talking about a little bit of the action on stage, a little bit of what? You know, so they they did spoil us with that sense. I'm Because if you could, but like, that's the thing, what would be the odds of like, you know, you put a little bit of, you know, like five bucks on like so-and-so, you know, taking a, taking a, taking a chair to the back of such and such or such and such, you know, uh, climbing up a ladder and jumping on so-and-so. You know what I mean? Maybe the Oscars, maybe like, you know, just to, if they were to like include a little bit of wrestling and it'd be a little bit more exciting. I'm saying the the most exciting event that happened was, you know what I'm talking about, you know, a little bit of, a little bit of that going on. That was kind of exciting. Got me to pay attention. But if you want, if you'd like to, if the Oscars are wondering how to get people's attention, incorporate a little bit of wrestling, put a couple of ladders up there, make contestants and, you know, uh, make the actors and actresses climb up top of a ladder. Maybe, maybe have them jump. Maybe have them flip it. The ones that, you know, the ones that do their own stunts, at least. Uh, have them jump from up top and, you know, drop an elbow on each other's fucking funny bones or, you know, crotchal area. Just uh, have a couple of, have a couple of, uh, you know, have a couple of them scissor it out just to see who gets the best Oscar. Best scissoring goes to... You know what I mean? So that's, uh, that's what it is, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. I'll finish up with this, I'll say this. Do you guys and gals ever think that, you know, ladies and gents, do we need to, did Moses get 10 commandments only or is that what he told us? Did he only get 10 commandments? Like when he had a chat with God. Because when you sit down with God, you'd think you'd ask for a lot of, you know, just give me everything you got. Or, you know, it's a sit down with the big guy. So I'm just wondering if he actually got Ten Commandments on two stone tablets. You know, was it, you know, did he have a long conversation and like God told him a lot of things and he's like, okay, are you ready to go? I've actually, maybe God, like, this is what I'm trying to get. Maybe God had like 10,000 or like a thousand commandments. Maybe, but that's these like you know we had a great chat. God it was really nice talking to you. Uh, I wish somehow I could take a message back to the people. I mean, maybe like great, I did, right here. I got you, got you, my boy. Jotted down some notes for you on some tablets, just thousand pointers, just to carry out every aspect of your life. And he's like, great. What did you write them on parchment? So I can you know I, I at least I could roll it up, put it in a satchel, and take it down the mountain or wherever Moses was and uh, God's like, no, parchments are going to decay. They're going to burn in fire. He wrote them on rocks. All right, here they etched in rocks and stone tablets. Here, take these thousand points back to the people. 
I'm, you know, it'll, it'll kind of guide you guys and gals out there and how to go about your lives. It's not, you know, it's not, you know, verbatim, but like, you know, use your interpretation, use your best judgment, use common sense. But here's the thousand pointers. The next thing you know, Moses is like, well, all right. And he's trying to pick up the stone tablets, but they're extremely heavy. They're stone. So he's picking up one, two, three, four, five, maybe six, seven, ten, maybe they, and that's the thing. He's carrying them. His back is like, oh my God, I can't. I'm, you know, he's got the sciatica. I'm wearing sandals out here. I'm wearing a onesie, but these loose sleeves, long loose sleeves, it's really hard. Why'd you write them in stone, God? They're so heavy. Ends up dropping a couple, breaks a couple of tablets. Oh man, those are really good points. Those are, those are some of the best points. At the end, he's just like, it's been like two, three hours. He's just made it to the door. He's about to leave. He's like, I can't take all of this. I'm only gonna take two. I'm only gonna take two, and I'll take ten. I'll take ten of the. T I'll take ten of the commandments. And this is this is what I can do. This is it's, it's a long. It's hot out here. First of all, again, I'm wearing a onesie, sandals, pebbles right in between my toes. It's really uncomfortable. I'll take ten. Take two of these. I think we're good with ten. God's like, you want to make sure you take a thousand. These are really important. It's like, I got the gist of it. I'll get back to the people. I'm gonna give them these ten. I think we're gonna be all right. Gets back to the people. The people are like, man, you were gone for a little while. Did, did, you know, did God say anything of value, of importance? Of, you, know, you were gone for a few hours at least. Must have had a lot to say. What did he say? He's like, he made, he made a lot of points, a lot of great points. He's like, great, tell us. What did he tell us? He's like, well, he's 10 things. These 10 things written on stone tablets right here. And they kept questioning. We're like, are you sure it was only 10 things? So you were gone for a little while. Did he not say anything more? Nothing at all? Nothing more than that? Just that? He's like, yep, that's... That's everything God had to say. Nothing more, nothing less. Sure about that, Moses? Gone for five, seven hours. Ten points. Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I hope you're all doing well. I hope you're all having a fantastic Wednesday. Uh, that was, uh, that was, that's just what we do around here. That's just what we do, just keeping a loose bunch of silly geeses and ganders out there, goosing around, just tooting, fritting, queefing out here. Uh, shout out to the gang. Thank you once again for joining me. Uh, it's been Wednesday. I hope you're having a wonderful uh, start to your week. It's midweek, but we are in, we're in March. We are in March. And man, last night, I'll say this. Last month was February. February is typically, you know, it's Black History Month. I think it's only appropriate that moving forward, we dedicate a month at least to, you know, we've, because that's what it is. You live in a, you know, you live in a time where you want to be, you know, Black History Month, February, after darkness comes to light. March, dedicated, starting right here, right now. March is, uh, you know, White History Month. Congratulations to everybody celebrating uh, white excellence celebrating you know white people uh, done a lot of, you know a lot of great things it's it's yeah my heart goes you know pa you know i think if we could just you know if we could just like somehow organize you know white power let's go uh also you know uh if we could yeah somehow organize the whites just you know just for boosting morale something tells me costumes would be effective i think a costume wearing uniforms probably helps i'm thinking something I don't know, something, something white, maybe with, maybe with a hood or something. I don't know. I'm just tossing out ideas out here just to, you know, just cause you know, you gotta have balance. If we're gonna, if we're gonna do one month, cause like you have, you know, you have Black History Month, then it's only appropriate just to keep things balanced. You know, White History Month, celebrating, you know, beautiful whites out there doing it. So that's just what I wanted to say. Uh, probably had, you know, there's a lot more that I like to say. There's a lot more and I'll, I'll keep saying it. I'll say it again and again. But like, I don't, you know, but we, we do different things all the time around here. So we don't do the same thing ever. Almost never. <laughs> Most often it's, you know, it's stuff that your boy cooks up on a daily. So if you like things that are cooked up on a daily, raw ingredients from farm to table, from table to fucking uh, farm, regurgitating raw material and <laughs> feeding each other via mouth holes. Yes, like baby birds and baby mama birds and then birds and just, mm ingesting all the goodness uh check out the show talk about it follow me on instagram subscribe on the youtube channel for the full-length videos check out patreon.com slash rob i'll be back here again next friday which is this coming friday 
Uh, shout out to the gang over here holding it down out there. Queef and keep it going, keep it going. I'll be back here again on Friday. In the meantime, love you all. Be good to yourselves and uh, each other out there. Talk to you all later. Peace out. Bye. Get out. Get out. Get out of here. Go.